Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. A post went viral on Facebook over the weekend when a Dilworth woman warned others of a man who she says followed her and her daughter throughout Walmart and into the parking lot. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley shows us ways to keep you and your family safe in scary situations. If you feel like you're being followed at a store or a parking lot, police have five tips to keep you safe. First, be alert. If your instincts say something isn't right, it probably isn't. Don't get lost in your phone or in the clothing racks. Pay attention so that if you have to describe the situation later, you can. Next, keep your purse and bags close to you with all the zippers shut. Police also say if it comes down to somebody demanding your bag, don't choose to keep it over your personal safety. And when you're going out to your car, keep your keys in between your fingers for quick self-defense. And as soon as you get in your car, lock the doors. Police also want those who have an iPhone to know this safety hack. If you're in a situation and can't dial 911, you can discreetly press the lock button on the side five times in a row and this screen will show up. You then swipe the emergency SOS button and it'll direct you to a 911 dispatch center. And lastly, call the police even if something didn't happen to you. Police want to come check the situation out and talk with you to keep other people safe. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Now tonight on Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW and on Valley News Live at 10, hear from two people who claim to have been followed by the specific person mentioned in the Walmart story. If you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call the whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Bail remains at three quarters of a million dollars for a Breckenridge man accused of killing his three-year-old son. Tracy Brandt is facing a second-degree murder charge and other counts in connection with the death of Winter Sky Barker. Investigators say Barker died of blunt force injuries in April. An autopsy found the toddler had been abused. He had injuries to his head and all over his body. Brandt remains in jail in Breckenridge. Close call for a homeowner in South Fargo after fire broke out inside a nearby garbage bin. Crews arrived to the 100 block of Prairiewood Drive South this afternoon, quickly put out the flames. There was no damage to the house. The cause has not been identified. The Moorhead Police Department is asking for help in finding a runaway teenager. Danelle Flores is 14 years old, approximately 5 feet tall and 115 pounds. She was last seen with brown hair but may have dyed it black. Investigators believe she is in the Fargo-Moorhead area, but don't know if she's with anyone. Anyone with information on where Donnell may be is asked to call law enforcement. Unlike yesterday's weather, there's a stronger chance for storms tonight. Let's get the very latest from Hutch. Hutch, what's out there? Well, we've had an active uh, late afternoon and early evening, but much of the area is starting to see the thunderstorm strength diminish and many of them clearing the area. Mainly northern lakes areas in Minnesota, big uh, up uh, the Lake of the Woods area and the upper Red Lake seeing thunder shower activity. Good news, the warm storms have lowered uh, below severe criteria. Still some thunder and lightning moving into western and central Marshall County, right over the big lake and Lake of the Woods and the western reaches of your upper Red Lake area. Small hail potential with these cells as temperatures today did soar into the 90s here in the Red River Valley and Roseau as well. A lot of upper 80s. It looks like we'll cool down into the 70s. We cannot rule out an isolated thunder shower tonight, but the chance is very slim, and our risk for severe is diminishing as well. More rain in the forecast, much needed, by the way. We're about an inch below average here in Fargo for the month. I'll have details on that here in a moment. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. And make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so you can keep up with the very latest on the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so you can plan your day. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. A Minnesota man who was killed when his ATV overturned in Red Lake County has now been identified. Authorities say James Congdon of Plummer was headed home from a friend's house over the weekend when he failed to negotiate a turn. First responders attempted life-saving measures, but Congdon was pronounced dead at the scene. He was not wearing a helmet. The preliminary autopsy report indicates that head trauma likely was the cause of death. Human remains found in New York Mills, Minnesota have been identified. Police say Linda Meyer from Fergus Falls was last seen on July 23rd of 2016. The remains were found last week. 
She was 46 years old when she walked away from a treatment facility in New York Mills and was reported missing. No foul play is suspected in her death. A Minnesota man is behind bars after police say he rolled his vehicle while drunk driving in Polk County. It happened yesterday in rural Erskine. Officials say the driver, 25-year-old Wayne Turner, and his passenger were taken to the hospital but are expected to be okay. Turner was arrested for DWI and an active misdemeanor warrant. Authorities say a semi carrying a load of wheat was totaled when it was struck by a freight train in Wilkin County, Minnesota. The driver of the semi escaped serious injury in the collision this morning. The BNSF railway freight train hit the semi east of Highway 75 near Wolverton. Authorities say the tracks are marked with crossing signs, but the semi driver didn't see the train coming. A longtime landmark department store in Lakes Country is shutting its doors after 112 years in business. The owners of Norby's posted on Facebook yesterday that it was a difficult decision, but they're shutting down the store in downtown Detroit Lakes. They'll be closed for nine days to get ready for the going out of business sale and will reopen June 7th. Each year, thousands of people are injured in a boating accident. Becker County authorities advise you to check your boat before putting it in water, including the steering, motor, and that you have gasoline. Tell family and friends where you're going and when you're expected to be back. You should also keep an eye on the weather. If you see lightning or hear thunder, don't take the boat out. Finally, they advise to refrain from alcohol when driving a boat. In our area, the Sheriff's Department says they usually run into boats with expired registration, driving recklessly, or kids not wearing a life jacket. A family is trying everything they can think of to find a treasured keepsake that was lost near West Acres Saturday night. This is a picture of a quilt that Jamie Heising has made for her or had made for her son as a graduation gift. The quilt is full of t-shirts that show events the boy was involved with in high school. Over the weekend, the quilt was left on top of the boy's car and went missing when the car drove off. Hear what the family is doing to get the quilt back and the story behind the shirts tonight on Valley News Live. That story sparked a lot of conversation in the newsroom about people doing the same sort exactly. of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. sure did. The best eighth grade spellers in the country are in Washington, D.C. right now battling it out. Later on Valley News Live at 6, how North Dakota's contestant is doing. Up next, frustrated with shoplifters, a local thrift store turns to social media hoping for change.